Good morning. Hello. Well, nice to see you all. Um, I'm your Port of Seattle Commissioner, Fred Fellerman, and uh, despite this uh, ungodly hour, it's great to see you all here today and um, really is uh, epitomizes the theme of my uh, brief comments today, that it's the partnerships that make us what we are. So thanks for showing up. Now, this picture of me at the Pacific Shipyard um, underneath the, uh, the uh, Virginia Five sort of depicts my age. I think it's sort of symbolic of my age, but it also underscores how I want to um, really express my uh, appreciation, both for the partnerships I've formed over the past seven years with uh, dedicated commissioners and staff as they change. I can tell you how great it is to work with this group of folks, as well as the staff who make things like this possible. So I would like you to join me in thanking the staff as well as giving it up again for the Raven Clan singers, please. <clears throat> so, as I said, strong partnerships are needed to build a resilient economy, which is intrinsically linked to the environment and our way of life. That's especially in light of the, such challenges as climate change, the declining declination of our natural resources, as well as the need to attract enough skilled tradespeople, especially those in the labor movement, who are critical to building a just transition to a sustainable economy. Now I'd like to share a few examples of those partnerships, and let's start with the big one, climate change. So it's often referred to as an existential threat, but it's also said often that big challenges bring big opportunities. So one of the ways the port is working to reduce our carbon footprint is by bringing sustainable aviation fuels, or SAF, to SEA. Since SAF is not produced from petroleum, its use significantly reduces both the emissions of CO2 as well as conventional pollutants, thereby benefiting the environment, the climate, and communities. We continue to make progress by working in partnership with airlines, Boeing, King County, WSU, and DOD, as well as state and federal lawmakers to incentivize the use and production of SAF in Seattle, the whole region. Now, for example, King County and the Port just jointly funded a study, good timing, to uh, see about financing the use of the county's municipal waste which otherwise would go to its rapidly filling Cedar Hills landfill as a feedstock for SAF. And we're exploring opportunities with DOD to refine it locally. Now on to tourism, and I appreciate all those uh, appreciations of thanks here. That the, as the owner of the largest airport in the region and the busiest cruise operation on the West Coast, tourism is a big part of who we are as a port. It's also a great example of our collaboration and st with stakeholders, including Washington State Tourism, Visit Seattle, and many small women and minority-owned businesses. Serving on the Visit Seattle Board of Directors and being recently appointed to the U.S. Department of Commerce's Travel and Tourism Advisory Council, I'm keenly aware of the importance tourism has played toward the recovery of both the service industry in Seattle and Alaska. My current focus is on expanding the interest in those attractions to benefit more rural parts of Washington State, which, re which retain some of the best examples of our nation's natural diversity. To that end, this past fall, the, the port partnered with the State of Washington Tourism to produce the first responsible outdoor travel summit. The goal of the summit was to identify ways that travelers from all walks of life can experience the great outdoors while stewarding natural and cultural assets they visit. Now, I can't make these remarks without mentioning one of my favorite subjects, killer whales. So my background as a killer whale biologist may be novel to Port Commissioner. I bet you there was never one before. But it turns out to be pertinent in that the port has, significantly, has significant cleanup and habitat re restoration projects, as you've heard of some, underway from kelp to killer whales. It's also critical that the port retains good working relations with tribal governments whose reverence for the whales has been part of building my tribal relations and professional success. And I think our Raven Clan singers did a great job of reinforcing that point. So one of the ways the port is involved with aiding the whale's recovery is by helping reduce underwater noise that masks the sonar the whales use to detect salmon. And that's my photograph. Slowing vessel speed reduces the underwater noise 
And since 2014, the Port of Vancouver's ECHO program has demonstrated that high degree to which mariners are willing to participate in this voluntary slowdown program when the whales are present. With seed funding from the ports of Seattle, Tacoma, the Northwest Seaport Alliance, along with the state legislature and agencies, a diverse group comprised of tribal governments, maritime professionals, and NGOs created the Quiet Sound program for Washington Waters, which just wrapped up its first successful slowdown pilot project this month. You're getting idea there's a lot of commas, a lot of partnerships, right? So in closing, I'd like to mention one of our newest partners, the Seattle Aquarium. The port recently signed an MOU with the aquarium that includes the development of a Puget Sound walk exhibit, which will be incorporated in their ocean pavilion that's under construction below the Pike Place Market. You saw it, which creates all that good traffic. So over a million, over a million visitors a year will be able to learn about the port's great environmental work and innovative job opportunities in the maritime industry as they look out over Elliott Bay from the expanded aquarium. So let me end by saying thanks again and being here for all our partners who are helping us rise to the challenges as well as the opportunities of the day. And now I'd like to introduce this short film about our partnership with the Seattle Aquarium. Thanks again. <laughs>